uh, you know, you say your 18th birthday changed your life forever. And, uh, you know, some of us who reported on the case uh, know that for a fact. I mean, I remember sitting in the courtroom right behind you that day. What's the most difficult memory uh, that you have from that day? So usually, you know, an 18th birthday, like it's a milestone of sort, right, on someone's life. And uh, most people, they kind of, they celebrate, they either go on hikes or they go on holidays. Uh, for me, it was kind of different, you know, and I can't really pinpoint as to what the toughest part of that day was because the toughest part was probably waking up, you know, because everything went downhill from there. So, yeah, it's, it's tough to kind of uh, pinpoint one specific part, but uh, because the whole day was kind of a little disastrous. Right. And, you know, I mean, they say writing a memoir is uh, the process of rediscovering oneself. Uh, what were the things that you rediscovered about yourself? What were the memories that sort of, you know, you went back to more often uh, in the process of writing this memoir? So, you know, whilst it is a memoir, uh, it is about someone traveling between the ages of 18 to 23. And that's kind of only a span of five years. You know, most people who write their memoirs, they write it between their twilight years. And that wasn't really the case for me because it was just five years, which kind of constitutes of only 25% of my life. So okay. I can't really talk in detail about exactly everything I rediscovered. But if I had to pinpoint, there would be, uh, I, I did kind of rediscover my optimism and my positivity throughout this whole process, you know, because the story, it really began to kind of empower me as I was jotting it down. You know, the title, the title kind of, uh, uh, you know, I'm inquisitive about Devil's Daughter. Uh, give me the story behind the title. I mean, why would you choose that title? Yeah, so actually, uh, Devil's Daughter, it's like, it's really interesting because uh, it came up in conversation with me and my partner and we were uh, talking about it. And the these two words, when they kind of joined together, I, I, my first thought did not go to one singular person or anyone, you know, as people would think it is relating to someone. It's more like a metaphor. It, for me, it was what how I felt like how I was looked at, you know, the devil's daughter being the society, the law, the media. And I think to kind of get the full answer to your question, one has to read the book, you know, because uh, it's, it's such a deep, beautiful and creative title that you can truly understand it once you've read the whole book. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, Vidhi, I mean, how was Indrani to you? Because I'm, 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 I know you, there are anecdotal, you know, stuff, uh, stuff that you've written about in the book. Uh, you know, how was Indrani to you? Uh, you know, did you ever ask her uh, about Sheena? Were you suspicious about Sheena's disappearance? I know you've uh, talked about it in the book, uh, but you could just say, share for uh, our viewers. How was your relationship with Sheena? Yeah, so I mean, my relationship with Sheena was uh, amazing. You know, it was it was great. The moment, the time we from the time we met, like we were attached to the hip. You know, and as you said that. I have written largely about like my relationships in my book. You know, I, I talk about certain relationships and the depths of it. So, you know, the second part of the question with to do with suspicion and disappearance, I can't really answer that question in two lines because also a lot of aspects related to your question are to do with the case. And currently it is in trial, so it's sub judice. So I can't uh, talk about that much. You know, I totally understand that uh, you come, you talk about coming home, guzzling alcohol, taking a bunch of medicines. Uh, what were you going through? What were you thinking? So again, this whole there's a whole chapter about this that's detailed in my book. And uh, you know, I was at the lowest point of my life, so I wasn't really thinking much when this happened. And sadly, you know, this it's not about the alcohol and the medication. It's it's about trauma. You know, it's what I was going through. This intensive kind of process trauma and alcohol and meds were just kind of an exhaust mechanism so you know we should try and understand like what what was going on it's it's what brought that on it's about the pain the anxiety the stress that kind of you know brought that on and uh, it's across so many different fronts so it's not it's not really about the alcohol and the medication Absolutely, you know, and uh, as a young woman, uh, just to be seeing, you know, your life being dissected like that in public, uh, 
as someone who's just stepping into adulthood uh, were you angry upset uh, because you know every detail perhaps you know, what you wore what you were doing what you said how you were walking everything was minutely analyzed and i remember because it at the end of the day you were in the center if not in the center at least one of the you know key persons of interest uh, in in this saga that was unfolding uh, uh, you know with such details you know uh, that were coming out how, how, how did you deal with that as, as to see your life being dissected you know i mean uh, like uh, it was terrible i mean ask if you're asking me if i was angry it's like literally me asking you was the pope catholic you know yeah. but uh, it was it was terrible i mean i was in complete confusion because no i mean I, beyond I just, anger i'm still i'm sure there was something beyond the anger of course you would have been angry i mean i because i really didn't understand as to why i was being attacked you know what what i had why people were so kind of curious about me whether i was smiling whether i was not smiling it was it was all being dissected as you said and uh, but beyond and above all of that it i'm kind of glad it all happened because it really made me stronger it made me you know i am where i am today because of that instance happening and you know it's given me the power to kind of speak out and confront all these issues that have happened uh and yeah i mean the the media it was excuse my language it was literally inhumane and kind of like animalistic behavior almost you know so it 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 really kind of put me into a shell after all that happened uh you know uh what space are you in now how do you view life now because you're someone who's uh, sort of you know been like i said every bit of your life was dissected analyzed space are you in now i i'm loving life right now i'm like super excited about life because uh, and you're a published author and i'm a published author yes that does uh, it's a perk that comes with that but uh, no because it's just, it's been such an intensive and big journey that i've i've just learned so many things and i'm continuing to learn you know it's not necessarily that i've learned everything as it's happening like even today when i'm thinking about situations that happened 6 years ago i'm still picking up different things from that you know so it's it's amazing i mean i love life i literally wake up excited as to what's going to happen next and you know who's been your biggest support system through all of this so i would have to actually answer that like my inner self you know my my conscience my kind of personality and my inner character have really stood by me you know i i could have really gone down the toilet or i could have risen up, risen from the ashes you know the fact that i've come through is a testament you know to friend support and my family but above all of that it would be myself you know because that's the person i used to wake up and look in the mirror you know i used to ask myself am i am i going to fall or am i going to stand up okay i have to ask you this question uh you know even your uh, father's uh, role uh, was questioned uh, you know and i know it's uh, it's still an ongoing trial uh what do you think of peter now uh, given that you've had so many years to process this and also gone through i, I would say the process of writing a book uh, and uh, have you forgiven indrani so i i mean see for regarding my father i think everyone knows you know what i think of him he is he is someone that i greatly look up to he is uh, someone that I've, i i continually learn from every single day and regarding my mom yeah you know i ha- i have forgiven her because it's it's really taken me a long time to kind of understand forgiveness because it, it's a really big thing you know in many ways i i kind of realize it's almost next to godliness because when someone learns how to forgive you unburden yourself you know you're not no longer holding on to kind of past grudges and i i don't wish to carry on that burden anymore on my back you know it's it's uh, and it's it's my relationship with my mom that i'm navigating through you know it's it's a complicated one and we're we're going through it one step at a time i know that, you know and i'll just ask one more question on this uh, you know i mean you do visit her in prison you mentioned uh, you know uh, uh, bits of that in the book also what are the interactions like i mean you know uh, seeing prison life also from the perspective of having someone you know being in prison i believe you uh, regularly uh, visit uh, uh, bikela jail uh, how uh, how has that sort of you know unfolded 
um so yeah i mean it's as it's it's a very tough process of course and it gets easier with time because uh, you kind of you you learn to accept it you know and again this is this is a whole chunk that i've mentioned in my book and uh, it's something quite personal to me you know and uh, what is vidhi mukherjee planning to do now i mean you know you've uh, what's the biggest lessons you've learned what are your goals going forward so you know my memoir is done but that's only the life of an 18 to 23 year old i still have the rest of my life right now and um i am kind of working on a couple of my own projects i am working on a second book um and honestly i really hope to use this platform that i've this uh, this opportunity that i've been given right to kind of speak about mental health and communicate with people who find it difficult as they don't really have an avenue to discuss these problems with anyone else you know i still feel like in india it's mental health is quite a taboo topic and uh, i i really wonder you know how many people my age are going through really tough situations you know sometimes it can be physical abuse sometimes it can be divorce from their parents or uh, sometimes alcohol is involved so i would really kind of like to use this opportunity and platform to communicate you know with the people my age and have them open up to me and just enforce the idea that it's it's okay not to be okay 